welcome to another video and as you can see by the thumbnail and the title yes so i will be sharing my experience over the years and the process that i had to go through in finding out what my diagnosis is so since 2019 i have been experiencing these symptoms you know still you know it started off slow or weak but as the years goes by those symptoms progress greatly and initially i could not have known what it was but based on the fact that they don't remain the same and there are times when the symptoms are higher than other times it causes me to think that there's something definitely wrong with me but i could not pinpoint what it was because i thought it was just being tired from going to work having a busy work day um running herons and all of those things i just thought it was just that and so i paid less attention to it in the earlier years and then more attention to it as it intensifies so some of the symptoms that i have experienced over the years are pain inflammation fatigue brain fog itching in the same area skin patches dry lips and also i lack sleep so much so 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 much so how has these impacted me over the years well as i've said before in the beginning I just rule it out as being tired from work or running errands but I remember doing my going to my doctor and complaining about what is happening to me as it intensifies and I think that was maybe two and a half three years after it all started and so he ordered me to do a blood test i did that blood test and it came back normal nothing was wrong and then things intensified and i complained again and he ordered me to do another blood test that blood test came back showing my ESR level or rate being very high because when it comes on to ESR it actually tests how fast your red blood cell is is able to go to the bottom of the tube or the jar that they're placed in for testing so the normal values for esr in men is 0 to 15 millimeters per hour and in women it is 0 to 20 millimeters per hour and researchers has shown that elevated levels of esr means that there is inflammation in the body and once that is present it means that you may have some form of autoimmune disease or otherwise so 
that particular result came back with my ESR being a hundred and something. I'm not going to tell you exactly hundred and what because I don't remember hundred and what, but I know it was very high, very high to the point where, as my doctor said to me, it seems like you have a severe case of arthritis. And I was saying hmm, to myself, it, that would make sense because the inflammation, the way all my feet hurts, the way how my feet burns me, it's like I stepped in fire. It is so intense that sometimes when I am walking, the amount of pressure that is under my feet, the sole of my feet is so great. I just want to put it in some cold water. That is how intense it was. It was like I stepped in fire. It was like, you know, somebody just rubbed pepper on me. That was how great the inflammation in my body is and was. So, I decided that, okay, that was not confirmed by him, you know. That was just his first observation of what the results is saying. So, all right, I said, mm, I said to myself, and I think for two years after that, I told myself that is what I had and I work with it but as the years go by it worsened it worsened and in 2013 let me just get the results and make sure I'm giving you the right information so yes in april of 2023 i don't i don't remember if i said 2013 now a while ago but mm, 2023 so in april of 2023 i got back another result that he had ordered me to do after the first one which he said that i may have severe arthritis so the esr level on that one is 90 it was 95 so from that previous one of a hundred and something it was reduced to 95 but it was still high because remember that you know the normal range for me is 0 to 20 and I am at 95 now so I have tripled that almost four times that so that means serious things is happening in my body and i keep telling my family that there there's something wrong with me something seriously wrong with me because i believe that no human being body is supposed to be exuding that much heat and pressure in terms of fire feeling like i'm on fire and to, to top it off my husband normally complain how hot my body is and i'm like but you're feeling it but i'm not feeling it because sometimes when you say that i am not really experiencing the heat of my body at that moment but if he's feeling it and there are other times when I am experiencing tremendous pressure and heat from the inflammation, but he has no clue as to what is happening. So, yes, that is what it was in 2023. Now, fast forward to 2024. This is another blood work with my ESR. And the ESR level went up 
by 10. So it's now 105. Remember the maximum 20 because the range is 0 to 20. I am now at 105. So my levels have been elevated. That make it worse it na nama so because of this inflammation in my body i have been experiencing severe pain severe pain to the point where sometimes not even pain medication can help me Sometimes what I found to be the best remedy is to try and get some sleep. And if I, if I don't get to sleep and wake up on my own, say for example, my husband or my kids come and wake me, that pain is going to double. I don't know why, but it, it, it has happened and it is still happening. So... On a scale of say 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest, my pain was 10. Sometimes, I don't want to show signs of weakness. And I just kept that pain inside. But you know what I'm grateful and thankful for? That I have God. And when I'm going through these situations and nobody else can understand it, I know God knows and he understands. And he already knows these things about me before they even happen. So he knows that I'm going to feel this way and I'm going to be in this position. So he has been, God has been my main support and source throughout these years of experiencing these things because the natural man or my husband the family members they can only do so much and no more because sometimes i used to think that i need them to fully understand what is happening to me but they are not the ones experiencing what i'm experiencing so they they will never fully understand. They will sympathize, but they they cannot fully understand. And I think for the last year and a half, I have I have come to the knowledge and the understanding that that is how it is. And I'm just gonna let them sympathize in whatever way they can sympathize. And then I talked to God about it and allowed him to get me through each day. Because that's what I need to do, you know. I just need to make it through each day. Because there are days when it's so hard. So hard. And there are days when I have good times whenever those times happen whenever those times happen all i have to do is make sure that anything i have to do everything is done in a vacuum because it may be days and weeks before i have that feeling again where I as I can take on whatever it is that I need to take on outside of that there are days when I even want to get out of bed and it's hard majority of the times when I went to bed you see to get up in the morning trouble i am awake but i i can't get up out of that bed my body is like a dead man a dead man's body just lying still there 
there's breath in me but in terms of movements mm -mm, there is none so there are times you now when i am there just lying flat on my back stretch stretch my hands out and there are times when i when i have to try and move my hand move my fingers to try and see if i can gain some movement in them i used to call it as the life is being sucked out of my body but i don't think that's the that is the right um way to term it i think it should be my energy levels are at a minimal and so because of that i need to get a little energy to get out of that bed when i do get the energy to sit up sometimes i just sit right at the edge of the bed and i can't move yet you know because my feet they aren't ready to go yet the upper part of my body is okay and it allows me to be able to sit up but then after sitting up i have to sit there for a while until my feet are able to carry me sometimes between lying and getting up and actually being mobile it may take between 15 to 30 minutes so sometimes you know i wake up early enough but but because of what my body is experiencing I can't I can't get up out of that bed when I finally get up and is moving about I'm like a snail I'm like a slug sometimes my husband said to me Tommy move faster no man and I'm like I can't I really can't especially when we have to go to work I really can't because I don't have the energy to I just barely get out of bed and then here I am having to now try to maneuver taking care of self and family to get out of the house for work and then going to work and trying to execute my duties. It's rough. Because of it all, my, my pace, the pace at which I walk is now slower. It is no slower because the fatigue is no normal regular tiredness you go to work and come back and you're tired or you go up on the road and come back and you're tired no fatigue in lupus persons is extreme tiredness meaning you're always tired no matter how much sleep you get, you're always tired. And that is it for me. I can say, if I, if I use a scale of 1 to 10, I would, with 10 being the highest, in terms of good rest, I would put it at a 2, 1.5 to 2. Because 1 and 2 times I may have um those occasions where i had a good night's rest and i and i'm 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 surprised by it and i'm and i and i'm i'm there just giving god thanks for that one night if it's even one night out of three months i get one night good rest i have to give god thanks because you see with these symptoms that i have been experiencing it allows me to move slower as i said so what would normally take me say 15 minutes to do is now taking me 30 40 minutes to do and you see especially when i go to work and come back home and i'm supposed to cook dinner for the family oh my by the time i don't cook dinner and do what i need to do for the rest of the night bedtime is 11 o'clock 
12 o'clock or 1 p.m. in the morning, 1 a.m. in the morning. So you tell me now, where do I get eight hours of sleep in that? It's been a while since I've gotten eight hours of sleep. And even when I was on vacation, vacation leave, I rarely get eight hours of sleep. Daytime, mostly, I'm me alone there. Me alone there home, and I could not put in eight hours of sleep. My body, my body is not allowing me to. Some other times it's because I am in so much pain, it's, it's, it's hard to sleep. And sometimes my body is too tired to sleep. When I go to work, I put on my best self because I don't want anybody to know that I am experiencing these things. And I definitely did not want anybody to think that I am incapable of doing my job or executing my duties and responsibilities. So I hid under my pain, under my suffering. Yeah. And sometimes while being at home, tasks are not even completed. Sometimes they are started and they are not completed. Sometimes if I have two, three, four tasks to do in a day, I might just complete one or two. And as I said earlier, when I when my body is experiencing a good day I try to pack everything into that one day but my body will suffer it afterwards because it will go into lockdown after that because I have over exerted my body I have put it under immense pressure just to get things done in that one day when I'm feeling well. So yeah, it, it is hard. It has been hard. And it's still hard. And I have also been experiencing tingling of my lips or my mouth several occasions sometimes me literally feel one of my lip go in a one different direction like my mouth just twist and i have to be praying to god just asking him not for it to be a stroke or anything detrimental when i start to have the feeling it it, it worries me because i don't know what's going to happen next and for years i have this rash or skin patch let me not say rash skin patch that looks like um the term just come back to me and it gone again you know liver spot it looks like liver spot in the initial but then over the years it starts to spread and it gets a little bigger and i was asked if it's a birthmark it's not a birthmark so definitely there's something that's causing it to be like that and um when it comes on also to brain fog those things you know just happen a li little by little because when it comes on to conversation sometimes since of late especially since 2013 into 2014 i find it very 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 hard to listen to a conversation past five minutes I have to put in extra effort into the conversation to actually make it make sense and also for the individual to know that I still care 
you know but i just don't want to let them know that i'm experiencing this because i myself don't know what i was experiencing or what led to what i'm experiencing and i can remember it affected it affected me on the job it affected me at church because i can remember one time i was doing the announcement and i was at a point where i was about to mention the names of persons and i had the notice in my hand the name is right there in front of me and it's like my brain just freeze it's like i couldn't figure out what the name on the paper was it's like i couldn't remember what to say and it was it was it was somebody in the background that said the name of one of the two persons that i was supposed to mention and then that put me back on track and i was there for about 30 to 40 minutes stuttering i even called a wrong name just trying to figure out what was happening and i was embarrassed to be honest me did shame imagine you had an announcement in front of the church the people the members visitors and this happened me did feel shame real shame but it wasn't evident that I was feeling that way yeah and so many other things happened after that you know that really allowed me to know that yes this this brain fog is real it's no joke no joke all right because several other occasions I I have been caught up in such and then when it comes on to all of these combined together it's just the grace and the mercy of God because from the last test that I did with my original doctor where the ESR was 95 he had given me another one to do and, and that was from April of 2023 that last result there I got so frustrated because I know there was something more happening in my body and he couldn't tell me he was just telling me to do test do test do test and maybe I expected too much of him at the time because he's not sure what is happening either and he has to do these tests to rule out what is not but I did not give him enough time to fairly do so and then at the same time again also I believe that he should have known to some level and have given me some result closer to some form of diagnosis and so in march of 2024 my husband and i had a discussion and he said to me try another doctor and i was searching about to see and this time i was specifically looking about um for the best doctor that they know in my area and what i also realized that most of the doctors in my area they are males so I kept on searching, 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 and I came across um, 
this husband and wife um, team, they are doctors. So when I went, the wife was there. So I, I, I went to see her and I was explaining to her what I was experiencing over the years. And her first thought was that I have I may have chronic fatigue and when she said that I was jumping for joy I was like yes she yeah man mm -hmm. finally we can get a, 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 a diagnosis because I was doing research and I came across chronic fatigue and as I went through the research, I cried. I cried, I cried, I cried. And I said, oh, this looks like definitely what I have. So when I heard her saying that, I'm like, wow. But you can't just use what I am saying alone to make such a diagnosis. There are other things that the doctors have to look on or look at and so she ordered me to do a blood test all right so I did that the results came back she she told me that um, I have low levels of um, anemia so I might be anemic in that sense and something else I don't remember what else she said and then she also said um, based on everything I am also displaying um, B12 vitamin B12 deficiency so with the blood work combined and what I'm experiencing, I also, I have um, vitamin B12 deficiency. And so she explained to me the reason why that may happen and let me know that I need to be on a series of injection weekly. And then after four sessions, I need to go on it monthly. So all of that I've been going on. All right, then. Then she, she wrote up a referral for me to see a rheumatologist because she looked at the ESR level. They were high. And with the excessive pain and all of that that I was um, explaining yes she made a referral and the referral was for um, someone in Kingston not anybody specific it was um, I had to go and and find the the specific um, rheumatologist all right so from that visit based on the prescription given we went to, to fill the prescription because my husband was there with me and my husband and the pharmacy that we went they had a good they, they have good relationships and so um he asked the pharmacist if she knows any rheumatologist um outside of kingston and she said she's aware of two and she gave him um the information those were i think i think no no the information we got was were rheumatologists in kingston so when we actually called one of them my husband was doing the calling when he called one of them they asked where we were located because we wanted to book an appointment and I think in Kingston, the next appointment would have been two, two to three months later. And she, the, the receptionist asked where we were located. And we told her 
and she said oh there's a rheumatologist in Mandeville closer to you and she gave the information we made the call and there were no immediate available um, space for us to see the rheumatologist I think we got the appointment we got was three weeks later yes and so three weeks later we went and I took the referral and the last blood work that was done by the new doctor and she looked at it she asked some questions and she did um, a thorough exam of me my joints and all of that um, looked at my skin all of that and that is when she asked me she saw she saw um, she saw the spot and she asked me if it was a birthmark and I told her at first I don't think so I'm not aware of that but that was one sign to her and she said to me based on what you are currently experiencing you could have suffered an heart attack you could wake up one morning and you're paralyzed you can't move and you could possibly have a stroke i was shocked because honestly i never really expect heart attack and paralysis mm -mm. the stroke part of it brings back my memory to the point when my lips or my mouth was tingling and, and a couple times I just felt like my mouth shifted one side of my face but it wasn't any heart attack of such and I'm thankful for that alright and it has just been that from there and so after the full exam she wrote up a prescription and gave me a, a new appointment date and we left i thought i was going to know what was happening to me at that very first visit why am i so presumptuous just one visit I may expect to know everything but the thing is you know I am just tired of not knowing what is happening with me somebody did anxious bad and when me realize it man I go get to know at that appointment I was disappointed but oh I also forget to mention that um, she had ordered a blood test and from that blood work there were 15 to 16 things that was being tested for when I saw when I saw that list of things what am I gonna test my blood for I'm like something really wrong for you you know one human being are going to be tested for so much things and yes that was my confirmation that something, something definitely 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 wrong with you and so um it 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 took me a while to actually um get the lab done because to be honest 
me did me did I think one figure if you do the blood test but when everything check up I'm like mm, 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 mm. no mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. it's expensive but you know it expensive but yeah and uh, i got it done and the appointment date that i had gotten from the rheumatologist i did not get to go on that date because the blood work was not ready but when it was finally ready i went i drove to mandava myself and i was nervous going because I know for sure this time I'll hear something as to what is happening to me. And it was my time to go and see her. We were there. We talked. She looked at the result. She looked at the result. She was saying that she's not sure of something on it and so she had to call the lab but it ended up that the lab that lab um did not do what a particular test using a particular method and so it took her a while to get through to them so when i finally went back into her about 45 seconds into the conversation or just call it a minute she said to me you have lupus and I'm like lupus I was surprised and I wasn't surprised why I wasn't all that surprised it's because when I got back the lab results and I when I do lab tests whenever I used to look on them I start look on them now and because of that anything that was out of range it means say, it do normal so I started to google and I started to google the things that were out of range and when I googled them, um, I think one particular one that I googled, it mentioned or stated about five different diseases, autoimmune diseases, and rheumatoid arthritis was one of them, lupus was one of them, and those are the two that I could remember out of the five. And so I was like, okay but when i was googling them when i was doing my own research when i saw those results i was like me nervous and me nervous because it's autoimmune it means something chronic it means something that I would have to live with. And with the use of medication. But it was never easy to see those list of autoimmune diseases but then i come back to reality and i said to myself if this is what it is it is what it is when i have been diagnosed 
and treated I will talk to my father about this I have been talking to him about it and he knows my frustration and I'm not talking about my earthly father I'm talking about my heavenly father God I have been talking to him about everything that I've been going on with me over the years and how frustrated I am and I need to know what is going on with me and I also take comfort in knowing that not everyone with some form of sickness or disease will be healed if it's in the will of the Lord for you not to be healed. I don't know what his will towards me is yet, but I will definitely be talking to him about it. And so, as it is right now, I am giving God credit first because he is the one that has given the rheumatologist the knowledge to be able to diagnose me. Yeah. So, and the rheumatologist will get her credit as well for her quick diagnosis. And just doing her job to ensure that her patient, or one of her patients, which is me, is getting the best care possible. So, at the end of that session, I got another appointment and I got some documents and I drove back to work yes I left for work in the morning left work went to the appointment and then from the appointment back to work and I'm, I'm glad that is how it worked out because I didn't want to be alone to have that to really think about. Mm -mm. I wanted to be busy. And I also realized that the more busy I am, the less I am thinking about it. Yeah. So... A couple weeks later... I went in search of ophthalmologist I found two and one wasn't available at the time when I wanted to and then what I realized when I showed the receptionist the the referral to see the ophthalmologist based on what my rheumatologist had referred so I had to do a baseline. I had to do a baseline. I had to do a baseline eye test to check the status of my retina and to ensure that, or let me say, to see what's going on with my eyes. Because before treatment of lupus, fully starts they want to know the condition of my eyes if there is any problem because I remember the ophthalmologist said to me that it is one out of 100,000 persons that have actually gone blind from being treated for lupus 
he wasn't he wasn't holding back that information he told me all right so um that examination was done but during the examination he said to me there are two additional tests that needs to be done um on your eyes tests that will also test for cataract and, and so forth and so i had to go back and do those two tests which never cheap none at all so everything involves money and these processes that i'm going through they are expensive but god has worked it out he always have been and i'm still trusting in him to continue to work it out because the treatment of lupus don't start yet so i am anticipating that and based on what i have heard so far it's not cheap either so yes um i don't remember what the tests are called but let me let me let me check on the receipt and i'll tell you what exactly um i was tested for the second time i went to the ophthalmologist the two eye exam that was done are optical coherence tomography and visual field test so the ophthalmologist only comes on wednesday every wednesday and i will be going back for those um for the report because he has to write a report based on the first exam the second exam and the third exam so three things were done in total with regards to my eyes oh and by the way from the first examination he also um concluded that i had dry eyes and so i was given um and eye drops to insert three times daily into my eyes yes so that is the last thing that i needed to do before my next appointment with my rheumatologist so the journey it has been eye-opening it has been challenging but i am so thankful and grateful that i was diagnosed i now know what is really happening to me and even now that i am being diagnosed it doesn't mean that oh everything is just going to go away no i am still experiencing these things and i am praying and hoping that the treatment when it starts will go well yes and so i also i was at work and i was doing some research on lupus because I was watching a few videos because it was lunchtime and then I was available after lunch. So I was doing some research, watched the videos, then did the research, did some additional research. And I didn't know that Jamaica has a lupus foundation, which I'm thankful I came across. And I was reading this article also um where it says that back in 2022 at least 6000 jamaicans were diagnosed with lupus and that was 2022 we're now in 2024 so can you imagine how that figure must have grown and also 
a lot of persons are living in Jamaica and the rest of the world with lupus that is undiagnosed just like oh mine was practically un undiagnosed for five years and if left undiagnosed and untreated it can lead to harm organ failure and death and so i am glad mine was detected and diagnosed at the time so that i can move forward into being treated and as i read some of the comments i came across persons just saying how it's hard for people to understand entirely what they're going through and those comments it broke me because i understood every single word of that comment and, and what persons with lupus have been experiencing and you explaining to others how you're feeling and they don't fully understand they don't fully understand so it, it, it i just broke down in tears that that's one reason and the other reason i was just glad to know that i now know what is happening to me and to also know that other persons out there are going through the same struggles so here is a short clip of what transpired and don't leave this video without subscribing liking sharing and commenting all right remember to subscribe 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 so until then um i will update you as soon as i can regarding my diagnosis on lupus